So I work for the Cape Leopard Trust. I work full time. I'm based in Paul. I used to live in Cape Town. Now I recently moved to Paul because I got married, and that's where my husband works. So I'm actually happy to be there because that's where the leopards are. Although I still haven't seen a leopard in the wild yet. I've seen one when it was started, but that doesn't count because I'm not in the wild. So I'm still hoping to see my first Cape Leopard. And um, what I do for the Trust is I'm an environmental educator. So I teach adults, children, everybody about the leopards. We use the leopard as our flagship species. And then we um, cover everything else, ecosystems, fanbors, all the other animals that we get. And so I do day trips with children. And I do camps in the Cedarburg. We run environmental camps in the Cedarburg with groups of children and school groups and also adults. And then the other thing I do is I go and I give presentations. So thank you for having me tonight. And I hope you will find it informative and that you'll learn something new. Some of it might be obvious, but some of it is definitely not. So thank you. And um, at the end, please help yourself to pamphlets and some magazines. Yes. OK, let me begin. And I'm still learning to use this because it's very technical. OK. <laughs> So, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> who knows what the difference is between cheetah and a leopard? Okay, the smaller size of the head. Right. Okay, you can put your hands up. So let me just tell you. <laughs> I'm used to giving presentations to children, so if you can just act like children. <laughs> okay, so the differences are the cheetah is obviously slender in build, in build and it chases after its prey. The leopard will stalk its prey and hide until it can pounce up on the prey. Sorry? Can you speak up a little bit? Okay, I'll try. <laughs> Can you guys at the back hear me? Yes. Okay. And um, the cheetah hunts during the day, and the leopard generally at night time. So the leopard does walk around during the daytime, but it's nocturnal. So like our normal cats, um, it, is, it is nocturnal and hunts during the night. Um, the cheetah just has ordinary spots, so it has just black spots. The leopard will have a brown spot in between a whole lot of black ones, and that's called a rosette. The cheetah also has tear marks on its eyes. Okay, and those are the um, the other names for the leopard in different languages, and it actually means spotted lion, the um, scientific name. Okay, so you get other leopards all over the world, and in general, leopards are. Um, uh, threatened and endangered, and the snow leopard and actually the clouded leopard are not technically leopards, although their name says it's a leopard. And so those are all the places that you get um, leopards around the world, and unfortunately they um, they are endangered, especially the snow leopard. And the man who actually started the Cape Leopard Trust, um, Quinton Martins, he started the Cape Leopard Trust ten years ago, in 2004, and he started researching and looking at the population of leopards in the Cedarburg, and he's actually now moved to America and he's researching the snow leopards in the Himalayan mountains. They're based in America. So him and his wife have moved there, although they still have, um, they still have something to do with the Cape Leopard Trust. So <coughs> the Cape Leopards, um, they're actually smaller than the northern savannah or Kruger leopards. They're about half the size. Um, so these leopards that you'll find here in the Boland Mountains, the Cedarburg, and up to Namakoland, sometimes they even go into the Northern Cape, um, but generally they are found in the Western Cape. So also up to the Hurrits and George and those areas. So if you picture the Western Cape, that's where they occur. And it's not a different species to the Northern Leopard. It's actually just, we call it the Cape Leopard because it's smaller in size. And, um, the male Cape leopards, about 34 kilograms, and females, 20 kilograms in size. And the northern leopards, double that size. So, <clears throat> the, also another difference between them, the Cape leopards have an extremely large territory. So, up to 1,000 um, square kilometers, the males, 
and then the females obviously smaller than that, but still even bigger than the female um, northern leopards. And who can guess why that is? Well, we don't smaller and faster. Food. Okay. Yes. So here um, in the Western Cape, we don't see herds of buffalo and whatever. We get some springbok, impala. So our leopards here have to um, disperse a, to a wider area to go get their prey. And that's also related to the fangorse vegetation in which the prey eats. So the soil in the fangorse vegetation is low in nutrients. So then the prey have to also walk around further to get their food, so then the predators have to do the same. <coughs> okay, so that's just <laughs> an example. So um, a one male cape leopard is equivalent to eight and a half domestic cats. <laughs> and then one female cape leopard is five, so they're actually quite small, about that high. The females have actually picked one up, and you can pick it up, and it's very large. So they're much smaller. Um, one of the main questions we get asked is, are they dangerous? Yes, if you corner them, if you come up to a female and she's got cubs, then she will um, attack. If they feel um, threatened, they will attack. But there has been no uh, recorded attacks of cave leopards on humans, just sightings. And they are usually actually, they're quite shy, so they'll stay away from us. And they'll see us before we see them, definitely. <laughs> So here is where the um, research is going on. Um, so the Cape Leopard Trust research okay, um, started in the Cedarburg, and um, at the moment there is research going on in the Bulland Mountains. We have two full-time employed researchers, and they are looking at the populations in the Bulland Mountains. Also, there's a project in the Khurits, and also in the back one. Okay, so how do you study such a <laughs> rare animal and one that we never see? Um, there's evidence of them. I'm sure some of you have seen maybe um, paw prints and also scat. Maybe some of you have even seen a leopard and then I'll be very jealous. <laughs> but um, they're scat, it's called scat. Um, it'll be um, quite big. And also, if it's been lying in the sun, it'll be white, because the calcium in the bones will go white in the sun. And also, they, the leopards eat up everything. So when they make a kill, they'll eat everything, hair, bones. Sometimes they'll leave just the horns if the buck had horns, um, which is very fascinating. Also, a porcupine, they eat porcupine. Um, they'll eat up all the quills. Oh, yes. <laughs> we actually um, we had a camp in the Cedarburg recently, and we found leopard scat, and there were pieces of the porcupine quill oh. in it. So, but that's not puncture cats. No, obviously not. It's just wrappage for them. <laughs> yeah. So um, we shot. <laughs> So you'll know if it's a carnivore if there's bone and hair in the scat. Okay, so there's the paw print. Um, one on top is the leopard. What is the one underneath? Dog. Yes. <laughs> you are banned from answering questions. <laughs> so <clears throat> the dog paw print um, will always show claws. That's the difference between cats and dogs and things like your hyenas and jackal. They will always have their claws out because they cannot retract the claws like um, your cats can. So, um, also, they, they sometimes can have their claws out, obviously, but in general, they walk without their claws out. Um, yeah, and then the sizes of the cape leopard, about 6.5 to 8.5 centimeters. Obviously, females smaller than males. 